What's up, everybody? I'm Samus Sabro, and as the title suggests, we're going to be talking about some of the worst manga releases of the year of 2023. So before we get into that, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Simon Sabro YT. Link for that will always be down in the description. Also, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an upload, all that good stuff. Also, comment down what was your least favorite release of this year, and it had to be something that like actually came out this year. Um, but yeah, comment down what was your least favorite. Uh, with all that out the way, let's just jump right into it. All right, so real quick, I do have technically six uh, series, or I think seven, I forgot how much I have exactly, but a couple of series on here that I am going to talk about that did release this year. And a lot came out this year, just, just to kind of put that out there. A lot of stuff did come out this year. And of course, I didn't read everything that came out. I did read probably just a handful compared to like the complete selection of everything that came out. Um, and there was definitely some that were like really good. And there's some that were really bad and we're going to talk about the ones that were really bad and of course just as a preface this is all my opinion i'm sure i'm probably going to talk about maybe one two maybe even three series on here that might be your favorite and i do apologize but i'm sure vice versa y'all probably had some that you you know disliked that were probably my favorites but let's kind of just get on with it first one and this is in no like specific order just like I guess the most interesting way I felt it would be talked about, I guess. But first we are gonna talk about DRCL by Shinichi Sakamoto. This one, I say worse, but like, it was more so underwhelming. That That's like the more proper term. And I feel like I've shown this book off in like, almost like the past five videos I've done so far, it feels like. But um, I didn't know what was going on in this book. I'll be like blatantly honest. I had no clue what was going on for about like 90, 99% of the story, I'll be honest. And I'm sure like, or let me not say I'm sure, but I would hope that, you know, future volumes of it would explain more to come. But, uh, you know, but I don't know. The art was great. And that's, that is literally the only thing that I could say about it. The art was great. And I think, mind you, I don't really like history. Like it's not uh, a subject that I, you know, familiarize myself with enough to say like, hey, this is my favorite subject. In fact, it was like my least favorite when I was in school. But um, I would like to say it's, you know, historically accurate. I, I think it's cool that the characters kind of have a, like their, their choice of words show they have an accent. I, like, I think that's cool, but outside of the art and the character designs which technically is part of the art um like there this this series has nothing going for it it is also a, a really beautiful release i will say that like the cover and just the overall like make of the book is beautiful high quality hardcover like it it is nice but that's like it's pretty much the only points i could give it for real but um that i guess technically is the reason I'm talking about it first because it's not that bad compared to everything else. Um, in fact, I think I might do it like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it like that where it's like from not as bad to just like progressively gets worse. Um, so we'll do this one next. Um, yeah, this one we'll do. And in truth, I forgot this came out this year. Uh, it wasn't until I was looking at my bookshelf thinking of what to make for this video and I was like, oh, did that come out this year? And I had to like search it up real quick. Uh, that is Sugumi Project Volume 1. I'm pretty sure I think like the first three, maybe four volumes of this came out this year. I only read the first one and it wasn't that it was bad. I just kind of like didn't ever pick up the rest of volumes. <laughs> like it wasn't actually bad. And maybe I would switch this with um Dracula because this one was like actually kind of interesting it's it's like a little survival sci-fi end of the world kind of thing i really don't remember i think it came out in like may or something like that i it's been a while since i read it i don't even know if i talked about it in a reading log when it you know did come out but 
did like the art. I know I say that pretty much all the time, but I did like the art for it. The story to my memory was pretty decent. Um, and I did, I did love a couple of like the, the pages. I don't know how to describe it, but like the paneling was also really good. Can't speak too much about it. I'll be very honest with you guys, but this was a pretty decent one. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably say this was like number five, so it wasn't as bad. And then Dracula at number four, just cause like, like I said, with Dracula, I, I literally just didn't know what was going on majority of the time. This one, I at least knew what was going on. Plus I like sci-fi way more than history. So I, I'll give this one a couple of extra points, literally just for that. I might, I might actually go and pick up the remainder of volumes for this. Cause it actually was like pretty solid when I was reading it to my memory once again. If you have been reading Sugumi Project, definitely comment down how like the later volumes are. Uh, is it worth picking up or continuing technically? And funny enough, last year in 2022, when I did like my most anticipated reads for, or releases for 2023, Sugumi Project was on there, funny enough. Um, so cool, <laughs> I guess. But moving on, um, do I wanna save that one? Well, we'll save that one kind of for last but we'll go with this one real quick because i did do kind of a video on it betwixt um it's a horror anthology i've said this multiple times i don't think horror really translates well into manga do not comment read junji ito junji ito is terrible <laughs> uh simple as that i'm sorry I, it's not like visible here but i have like a bunch of jinji ito stuff on this shelf here jinji ito is terrible in my opinion um i just don't think horror translates well into manga there has been a couple of you know good i'd say like ibitsu um shintaro kago stuff like those are pretty good but outside of that it's uh, mm. I do think thriller is good with manga, but horror, not so much. Um, and Betwixt kind of just like falls because of that. Like, that's just my own personal thing. The reason why like, it's not that bad. And I did mention this when I did talk about it. It does the coolest thing ever. So it has three stories by Japanese um, mangaka and three stories by American, I want to say, mangaka. And the way they did it, so this is the Japanese orientation, and they did the three Japanese stories like, you know, like a typical manga style. But then if you flip to the back of the book, it does like the three American manga in like American style. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool. So that's like the only positive I could really say about the book. Some of the stories were pretty interesting. Um, I wouldn't use the word scary nor horrifying or even uncomfortable like i wouldn't even say they were uncomfortable they were just oh that's cool kind of thing um and i did talk about this in my uh what was it the most recent reading log and the hall but mostly the reading log where i said like homunculus that made me uncomfortable and that's thriller so that's a thriller uh, I'd, I'd say that goes better into manga compared to horror i just don't think manga is a good like catalyst for horror if you have a really good horror manga, recommend it to me, actually. We'll, we'll do that. If you know of a really good horror manga, go ahead and recommend it to me. I'll give it a try, as long as it's not Junji Ito. If it is Junji Ito, you should be ashamed of yourself, because this, mm -mm, this, is, this is not up there. But moving along, we have one story, and this one, I just, I really just wasn't feeling it, I'll be honest. I'm sure it's probably a really good story, um, and it wasn't horrible to say. It was just not my cup of tea. It was just not my cup of tea. And that is Monthly in the Garden with my landlord. Uh, it's about this girl who moves out of her old house because she went through a breakup and everything in the house reminded her of the ex. So she moves in with this lady here who is her landlord. And it's a GL, very, very, I don't want to say standard because I think this is the only GL I've ever actually read to my memory. Um, also, the landlord also happens to be an idol who's on hiatus. So that, you know, creates a little bit of, oh, and also 
the landlord like sucks at doing any type of housework and she's really good at housework and pretty much like everything else um so it's it's, it's kind of interesting but like it wasn't me interesting you know i wasn't it didn't have enough drama going on I, I think that's probably what it was it was it was very like one note it was it felt like it needed a little more shake up it had like conflicts here and there within the story um there was one like with a stalker and then there was one with the i don't remember if it was the idol's mom auntie or grandma but some motherly figure in their family kind of thing like those were the only two conflicts i remember which were they were okay um it did create you know character development and bond between the characters just wasn't feeling it i i, I really just wasn't feeling it like i said probably wasn't enough drama i like darker stories it just wasn't dark enough for me um now moving on to okay how do i want to do this we have we have two left both of them have a bit of a story to it and if this video gets like past 20 minutes it's because of these two series right here because uh we'll hmm we'll do this one first because i've already expressed a lot of my opinion on it um yeah we'll do this one first and that is if you've been following the channel to no one's surprise at all but um if you're new here i'm sorry you're probably gonna hate me after this boys abyss volumes one two and three um this one is a little bit of a honorable mention so to say i've been doing like air quotes a lot in this video i'm sorry but this one's like it's an honorable mention because it like okay where you go so my complaints was with this is that it wasn't dark enough and the relationship was very like one note i, I you know kind of like that like the story the conflict wasn't conflicting enough right this does everything i'd want this book to do to an extent but this just doesn't do it good it it's it follows a story of characters creating problems for themselves and i'm assuming that you've read it because this was one of the biggest releases of this year i'd say um and also once again last year i did say i was hyped for the release of this because everybody was gassing it up i was like okay let's check it out boom i i have made two videos talking about this series i did not enjoy reading the first the second nor the third volume i did not enjoy it but i did enjoy it it, it was one of those like it's like reading a shuzo oshimi book you just feel terrible reading it but you can't stop reading it like you sit in there you're turning the pages and you're just you just keep on going but you're like dang I feel disgusting. <laughs> That's what this book is. And like I said, I'm assuming that you've read this already. Um, it's just not, it's, it's just not all the way there. Also, my volume did like this weird peeling thing. I don't know how normal that is. That's like the first time I've ever had this happen to me. So I don't, I don't know, but yeah, Boys Abyss. I feel like I've expressed my, my thoughts on this way too many times this year. Um, like I said, I do have two videos kind of talking about it, which I'll leave a link to those in the description in case if you're curious. But long story short, not the biggest fan of it, but I am going to keep on reading it. Like out of all of the things I've shown so far, I think this is the only one I'm actually going to continue collecting just because I am curious to know what happens. It's like a guilty pleasure series, I'd say. Um, yeah that's that's about all i can say about it in all honesty and okay moving to the last one so in truth about probably a week ago maybe two weeks ago this would not have made the list if you've seen my most recent i want to say it was the manga collection video um you will know exactly why this is on the list and i think it was a phenomenal series like like i said this would not have made the list if not for like recent events that is Tokyo Aliens. So here, I only have volume one in my hand. I have two and three right over there, but okay. So I believe in English, it should be four and five. And I think six came out, but I could be wrong. I, I can 100% confirm that four and five are out though, right? Volume one came out last year, I think like November, 2022, right? So 
technically I really shouldn't be including this because like the series itself, you know, started last year. But my problem was the release of volume four and five, specifically volume four. And I don't have the book with me because I literally returned it the day I'm recording this. Like I'm, I kid you not, I returned that book the day that I'm recording this. And now that I'm recording, I was like, dang, I probably should have held on to that book for like one more day just to show it in the video. But and I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to feel lazy in doing this like during the like not recording, but editing part. But editing me, please just just put up a clip of me showing why I hated the release of volume four. Like it's a lot of work. Not really. But go ahead. I, I believe in you. It's gorgeous. And this, so this dude's hot. <laughs> this volume cover is great. But this book just doesn't feel good. Like, I don't know if it makes sense. Like, it's not. Let me just show this opossums. This is like how normal manga functions. Like, it just does this thing. This book is stiff, dude. <laughs> um, Like, I can't. I don't know if this makes sense to y'all. But, like, you kind of just. Like, this one's. It just. This one's subtle, you know. But this one's like. I just don't like the texture of this book. <laughs> and that's pretty much the reason why I hate it. It was a perfectly good series. Like volume one, two, and three were heat. I I, I loved it. It was sci-fi, shonen. It was it was a little generic, but it was it was just it was okay. It was that good mid. You know, it was it was just a good mid. It was mid, but it was just it was a good mid. And then that volume four came out and like I showed in the in the little clip, this one does not do that at all. This is a perfectly normal volume of manga. The other one, and I did ask people to like comment down if their own was like that as well. And the people that commented, thank you, because I thought it was literally just me. And I'm glad to know it wasn't like mine alone. And I learned a lot of things about publishing processes because of you guys. So thank you a lot. But this, it was such a letdown because it was just really like i was sitting there i was like man this volume four is gonna be great i can't wait for it to come out then it comes out and i was like uh mm, uh <laughs> you know and it was just it really hurt my heart and that's why this gets like i guess the number one spot for like worst release because it was it had so much good potential and i'm pretty sure volume four and five were probably great like they were probably amazing volumes but just the fact of the quality alone maybe just give up on the series i was like ah, all right that's it like like i said i literally went and returned volumes four and five today <laughs> the day i am recording this because i was like i literally was like huh let me try and read volume four real quick and the way the book just opened up just felt so awful i was like no i can't i literally i could not bring myself to do it and i was like now I'm stuck with these first three volumes and I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. Um, I kind of like I thought about doing a giveaway for them, but I, I would feel wrong doing a giveaway for, <laughs> for this series just for you to experience like the same thing I'm going through right now. Reading the first three and then you go and get that volume four and then it, it, it just doesn't hit. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. I'll just hold on to them, I guess. Maybe they'll do a reprinting of volume four with a better, you know, quality. But until then, I, I honestly don't know. But that is pretty much it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Let's give a quick shout out to our channel members. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. You guys mean the most to me. Um, once again, be sure to follow me on Instagram at SimonSabroYT. Link for that will always be down in the description. Once again, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an upload, all that good stuff. Once again, comment down what was your like least favorite release that of 2023. Sorry, English, I'm like super tired right now. But as I said, comment down what was your least favorite release of this year. Um, that's pretty much it. Once again, thank you all for watching. This is Sami Sabro signing out. Catch you on the next one.